So after Banyala, now we go to the next one is Charles. We now also go to Charles. Also, for it for Charlie. So that should be under from manager one. So we go to the other method. We go to the other method. So the second method is differential piece rate. We now go to the one for the differential piece rate. We now check the one for the differential piece rate. Differential so when it comes to differential piece rate, we start with the above line. We start off with Avonga. So when it comes to Avonga, they say that the employee is compensated on the piece rate basis, and the following schedule is applied to determine his or her remuneration. So one to 250 is 15. 251 to 500 is 20, then 100, 500 and 1 to 1,000 is 25, then above that. So spoil units are deducted from the first production and paid at a rate of 10 per unit and a penalty of 8% applied at the differential rate of the first production. So three employees of the company produce the following. So the following. So we want to determine, so they have said that spoiled units are deducted from the first production and paid at a rate of what? 10 shillings. So good units. So good units. So there is the one from one to 250. So this one will start the good units. So good. So they have said that the spoil are subtracted from the good units. So it is 250. It is 250 from 1 to 250. So when we minus 200, we get a spoil. It means we are left with what? 150. So the 150 is valued at 50. 50. We are on the differential rate. 250 minus 200. No, yeah, 250 minus 200. This one is. So the 50, we buy them at 15. Buy them at 15. Then they spoil it. 
this poem is Williams. They are two hundred different. But this one they have said they are paid at a rate of seven. Like that. Then the next one is now the one of two fifty one. So, so it is also this 250 minutes. So that range, 251 is the same as 200. So those ones, they be 20. Like then from 501 to 1000, there are 500. So the 500 so we multiply by 25. Multiply by then over. So above 1000. See, these are 2000. So above 1000 is also 1000. So this one. They pay but then we less the penalty. You will be required to less penalty. So penalty was the uh, 200 members. The one for this point. But the penalty, they were able to say that that it is 80%. Or eight percent applied a differential rate of the first production. So first production is fifteen. So get eight percent of the fifteen. So that penalty will be required to subtract. So that penalty will be required to subtract. So that we now get the cross rate for that. So that one is how much? So we go to the next one. The next one should be which worker? Yeah, so we go to Canada. So under Panyala, you see the spoil limits were 100, which means it is 150. This will be 150, then this is 100. Then this one will be this one will be one. So that is now for Banyala. So you will do the same for Charlie. You will do the same for Charlie. So they are 1,800. Yeah. So that means for 1,000, it is 800. Now. So do the same for Charlie, also to get the total pay.
So which one has the lowest rating? So they have sent some notes to the class group about the first topic, which was introduction to management accounting and also the classification for the costs. So online, I hope you can see them. Online, you confirm whether you can see the notes for the introduction to management accounting. I suspect they have just been sent a few minutes ago. So make sure you get those notes. You go through them. It is the topic number one. Okay, they will soon, they are going to send them immediately. So you make sure you check those notes about introduction to management accounting then also classification of the costs. So make sure you confirm when they have sent them, then make sure you print them, you go through it's the topic number one and topic number two. So the Roma letter two of the question, they were asking you to advise each employee on the best labor remuneration method to accept. So an employee will take the highest. An employee will take the highest determine the wages, they advise the employee on the best labor remuneration method to be accepted. So when you check under, and when you check all of them under the piece rate and the differential rate, where are they paid higher? Yeah, so all of them for piece rate are higher than the one for the differential. So I hope that is the case online. I hope those under the differential are getting higher than the one for the piece rate. Piece rate are getting higher. Piece rate are the ones that are higher. Yes. Yeah. Therefore, we conclude that the workers will accept the piece rate. The workers will accept the piece rate since it is where they are paid higher they will accept the piece rate since it is where they are paid higher. They are paid higher. But if it was the company, you pick where, they are, where it pay what? Less, yeah. So that's now the conclusion for the labor costing. So I had sent the notes for the labor costing. Make sure that you print those notes, you go through them. They normally give you some theory notes, questions on that. So that's now the conclusion for labor. So the next item, the next item should now be the overheads. The next item should now be overheads. Remember, it was material, labor, and overhead. Yeah, so now we go to the overheads. We now go to the overheads. After labor, we should now go to the Overheads. We shall now go to the overheads. We shall now go to the overheads. So when it comes to the overheads, we shall write that these are operating costs of the business. These are operating costs of the business, which cannot be identified, which cannot be identified which cannot be identified, which cannot be identified to a particular cost unit, which cannot be identified to a particular cost unit, which cannot be identified to a particular cost unit. Then we continue by writing that overheads are indirect costs. Overheads are indirect costs. Overheads are indirect costs, which do not vary, which do not vary with the level of the output, which do not vary with the level of output, which do not vary the level of the output, unless, unless they are specifically stated, unless they are specifically stated, 
unless they are specifically stated as variable over S, unless they are specifically stated as the variable over S, unless they are specifically stated as the variable over S. Then another paragraph, we write that they are also the indirect lever. They are also indirect lever. They are also indirect lever, comma, indirect materials, indirect materials and expenses, indirect materials and expenses, indirect materials and expenses. They may include, they may include all costs, they may include all costs which cannot be identified. They may include all costs which cannot be identified, which cannot be identified directly to a specific cost unit, which cannot be identified directly to a specific cost unit which cannot be identified directly to a specific cost unit. To a specific cost unit. So let us now look at the apportionment and allocation. Apportionment and allocation of the overheads. And allocation of the overheads. So we now look at the apportionment and allocation of the overheads. Apportionment and the allocation of the overheads. So under that, we shall first have a subtopic as apportionment of the overheads. So we start now with the first part as apportionment of the overheads. Apportionment of the overheads. So under the apportionment of the overheads, we write that this is the distribution or sharing. It is the distribution or the sharing of the amount of the overheads. It is the distribution or sharing of the amount of the overheads, the distribution or the sharing of the amount of the overheads to the various departments or sections, to the various departments or sections, to the various departments or sections, using the appropriate base, to the various departments or sections, using the appropriate base, using the appropriate base using the appropriate base. So the base should be the cost driver. The base should be the cost driver. The base should be the cost driver. The base should be the cost driver that will lead to the occurrence of the overheads. The base should be the cost driver that will lead to the occurrence of the overheads. Should be the cost, the, the base will be the cost driver that will lead to the occurrence of the overheads. And we continue by writing that examples of the overheads and the base will include examples of the overheads and the base will include examples of the overheads and the base will include examples of the overheads and the base will include. So we can have the overheads and also the base. We can have the overheads and then the base. So number one will be rent and rates. Number one will be rent and reps. So for the rent and the reps, we normally apportion it on the basis of the floor area occupied. So this one will be floor area. Okay. 
<laughs> when you want to pay rent, you don't want to use the area of right? That's not the best of a portion rent. rent and rates. Then number two, we can have electricity. Number two is electricity. So electricity is used in two areas. One of them is lighting. Then the other one will be heating for the other one will be heating and heating and heating. So for lighting, we use the floor area of the floor area of the light. We use the floor area of the light. That is for lighting. But for heating and cooking, it is normally measured in terms of kilowatts. You are portioning it in terms of kilowatts. You are portioning it in terms of the kilowatts. So that is now electricity. The next one it is supposed to be insurance. So number three will be insurance. So insurance, we normally use the value of the asset being insured. Value of the asset being insured. So insurance, we use the value of the asset being insured. Number four would be depreciation. So the next item will be depreciation. So for depreciation, we use value of the asset being depreciated. We use value of the asset being depreciated. Value of the asset being depreciated. The value of the asset being depreciated. The next one will be employer's liability. The next one will be employer's liability. Employer's liability. So the employer liability is the wages paid. So wages paid will be the best for that. Wages paid. The wages paid. The next one will be supervision. So supervision will be number of the workers or employees. Supervision will be the number of the workers or employees. Number of the workers or employees. Then the last one will be canteen expenses. Canteen expenses. Canteen expenses. So for the canteen expenses will be number of the workers. Canteen expenses will simply be the number of the workers. So that is now all about a portion. So let us also go to allocation of the overhead. We now go to the allocation of the overheads. We now go to the allocation of the overheads. Allocation of the overheads. So when it comes to the allocation of the overheads, we write that. It is the distribution of the overheads. It is the distribution of the overheads. It is the distribution of the overheads. During the budgeting process, distribution of the overheads during the budgeting process. During the budgeting process. During the budgeting process. Using the appropriate cost driver using the appropriate cost driver, using the appropriate cost driver to allocate the overheads, using the appropriate cost driver to allocate the overheads, to allocate the overheads to the various departments, to allocate the overheads to the various departments, to allocate the overheads to the various Partners. 
Then another paragraph we summarize that all violets will be allocated on the basis of overheads will be allocated on the basis of overheads will be allocated on the basis of the overhead absorption rate 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 which is calculated as follows on the basis of the overhead absorption rate which is calculated as follows so overhead absorption rate so overhead absorption rate will be equal to total overheads you get the total overheads total overheads we divide by overheads absorption rate. so to get the overhead absorption rate it is given by total overheads divided by overhead absorption rate divided by the overhead absorption rate but we shall be the most of them we shall be expressing them as a percentage most of them we shall be expressing them as a percentage so i can give you an examples for the basis of that so we can have the base then also the formula the base and the also the formula from that. we can be able to have the base and also the formula the base and also the formula so the first one is direct materials so number one is direct materials so under the direct materials overhead absorption rate overhead absorption rate will be equal to total overheads total overheads divided by material costs divided by direct material cost direct material costs then express it as a percentage you express it as a percentage that's now direct materials then number two we can have it as direct labor number two we can have it as direct labor costs the direct labor costs so the formula for that overhead absorption rate overhead absorption rate will be equal to the total overhead costs total overhead costs divided by the direct labor costs divided by direct labor costs divided by the direct labor cost then you express it also as a percentage you also multiplied by a hundred also multiplied by a hundred the next one should be number three prime cost so number three you can have it as prime costs so for the prime cost the formula of the overhead absorption rate will be equal to overhead absorption rate will be equal to total overhead costs total overhead costs total overhead costs also divide by the prime costs also divide by the prime cost then you express it as a percentage also divide by the prime cost then you express it as a percentage remember prime cost is the addition of direct material plus direct labor. so that's a combination of direct material plus direct labor. that's what gives us the prime cost then number four we can have it as accumulated costs number four we can have it as the accumulated costs accumulated costs 
So the formula for that overhead absorption rate will be equal to the total overhead costs, total overhead costs divided by accumulated costs, divided by the accumulated costs, then also express it as a percentage divided by the accumulated costs, also express it as a percentage. The next one will be machine hours. The next one will now be machine hours. The one for the machine hours. So for the machine hours, overhead absorption rate will be equal to total overhead costs. Total overhead costs. Then you divide by number of machine hours. So total overhead costs. We divide by the number of the machine hours. So that one is not a percentage. That one is not a percentage. We simply be getting the shillings per machine hour. So that one will not be a percentage. So the next one is the labor hours. The next one should be labor hours. The next one is meant to be labor hours. The labor hours. So for the labor hours, for the labor hours, labor hours will be overhead absorption rate will be equal to overhead absorption rate will be equal to total overhead costs, total overhead costs, total overhead costs will divide by number of the labor hours, divide by the number of the labor hours. So the next one will be number of the units. The next one should be the number of the units. So for the number of the units, the formula will also be overhead absorption rate will be equal to the total cost. The total cost. Then you also divide by the number of the units. So even that one it is not a percentage. Even that one, it is not percent. So that is what we can get from that presentation. So I want us to have now some questions in our first place. So the first question I would like us to check is November 2019. November 2019. November 2019. Question number three, part B. So you check November 2019. Question number three, part B. November 2019. Question number three, part B. So 
Thank you.
So, when you check through that question, that was question three, part B, the question for November 2019. So that question three, part B, they talked about Supreme Limited is a company that specializes in the market in making high quality furniture to customers orders. The company has three production departments and two service departments. So budgeted overhead costs for the year ending 30th April 2020 are as follows. So rent and rates is given. Machine insurance is given. Telephone charges is given. Depreciation. Then production supervisor salary. Then heating and lighting. So the three production department, A, B, and C, and two service department, X and Y, are housed in the new premises. The details for which together with their statistics and information are provided below. So they have given you those items. A, B, C are production department. X, Y, they are the service department. So, when you go to the required, when you go to the required, So required So required Roma letter one is not there. So Roma letter one should be that that overhead distribution schedule. Roma letter one should be the overhead distribution schedule. Roma letter one should be the overhead distribution schedule. Overhead distribution schedule. So Roma letter two is now which is supposed to be that two jobs, that is 123 and 124. Two jobs, 123 and 124, has the following information. Has the following information. It has the following information. So when they have given the information required, total production cost for each job. Total production cost for each job. So that Roman with the one should be eight marks. That Roman with one should be eight marks. Then you are given four marks. So let us first prepare the overhead analysis sheet for a distribution shield, the overhead analysis shield, the overhead analysis shield. 
So you got the mouth, they're all by the all by head. Change on the mouth, they are all by head. Analysis change. So in the overhead analysis shape, you will be having the bottom of the overhead. Then amount, amount, then the this, the this, then also the ratio, also the ratio. Then you will have A, B, a, B, C, X, and our zeros reach them. So make them wider. Mine is because the board is small. You split them to create enough space for each. So split them to create enough space for each. So there is overhead, amount, the best, the ratio, then A, B, C. X and Y. So remember, A, B, C are the production department. X and Y are the service department. So you create enough space for them. So the first, so there are three zeros at the top. Remember, they are in shillings, but you can use three zeros at the top. You can use three zeros at the top for each. You include shillings, then three zeros at the top for each. Except the base and the ratio and the overheads. So the first one, the first one from the question, are you able to see range and reps? So we start with the range. And rates. So rent and rates, the amount given is 12,800. The amount given as well as 12,800. 12,800. So we check down there. Are you able to see information concerning the departments? So what should be the appropriate place? There is the raw area, machine value, Direct labor hours, labor rate per hour, allocated overheads, and also those ones. So we start with so rent and rest from the previous information I've given you. We use the area occupied to apportion the rent and the rest. When you want to apportion the rent and rest, the best would be the area. So we create the ratios. You can see down their area occupied in square meters. So A is 3,000, B is 1,800, 600, 600, and 400. So we get the least common multiple, which can go to all of them. So least common multiple, which can go to all of them, is 200. It's 200. So 200 can go to 3,000 how many times? 15 times. Yeah, so it will be the ratio will be 15 is 2. The other one is 1800 divided by 200. Okay. This one is 9. Then the other one is 600 divided by 200 will be 3. The other one should be what? 3. Then 2. So those are the ratios. Those are the ratios based on the area occupied. So I hope everyone online, it is clear to you on that point. Is it clear to everyone, those who are online? Yeah, so I want you to add them together. Add 15 plus nine plus three plus three plus two. So I want you to add them together. Add 15, nine, three, three, and also two. It gives us 32. So once you get 32, to allocate to A, take 15 divided by 32, then multiply by 12,800. To apportion to A, get 15 
divided by 32 multiplied by 12,800. So it should give us. So you reckon it under A as 6,000. You record there 6,000. Then you go to B, which is 9 divided by 32, also multiplied by 12,800. 3,600. So 3,600. So you do the same for C. 1,200. 1,200. Even this one is 1,200. The last one should be yours. 800. The last one will be 800. So that's now how to apportion rent and rent. The next one is machine insurance. So we got the next one, which is supposed to be machine insurance. Machine insurance. So for the machine insurance, they have given you six thousand. So the best for the machine insurance, we shall use the machine value. We shall use machine value as the best. The best will be the machine value. The best will be the machine value. So under that part for the machine value, we check down there. They have given you 240, 100, 80, 40 and 20. So the least common multiple will be 20. So you divide each by 20. So when you take 240 divided by 20, it will give us which ratio? 12. It will be 12. So 12 is 2. Yeah, you can put that up there. 5. Then 4. 4. Then 2. So you add them together. You add them together. 12 plus 5 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. Now put that 24. Yes. Yeah, so now you take 12 divided by 24 and multiply 6 that way. 8, so this will be 3,000. Then we can get five divided by four one by six thousand. Mm -hmm. Then C. Then X. That is five. How about Y? So that is now how to apportion the rent, sorry, the machine insurance. Then the next one is the telephone charges. The next one is the telephone. Telephone charges. So telephone charges, the figure we have for the telephone charges is 3,200. 3,200. So you want to know which is the most appropriate base. Remember, you can see in the question, there is the floor area, machine volume, direct labor hours, labor rate per hour. So among those ones, which is the most appropriate to apportion telephone charges? So how do we apportion? Remember, you pick from what you are given. So what they have given us, there are only four. There is floor area, machine value, direct labor hours, and labor rate per hour. You see those figures? So among the four, which can we use to apportion the telephone charges, especially at maybe the place of work? So normally, telephone charges, as per this question, we shall also use the area occupied. A department with more area occupied will use more. Yeah, because we cannot use the machine van to apportion the telephone charges. We cannot use the labor hours. 
to apportion that. We cannot use the leverage. We can use the area. Area can work. I didn't give you for the telephone charges, but they come up. So telephone charges for this question, you use the area occupied. You just use the area occupied. A department that has a higher floor area, it means it has more people. You get more telephone charges. So we already have the ratio of all that. The 15, 9, 3, 3 is equal to So you already know that. So I want first of all to explain all of them. Then you will redistribute. You have to know how to redistribute. So let us now go to the next one, which is the depreciation. The next one is meant to be the depreciation. So at depreciation, they gave you 18,000. Depreciation was 18,000. So to apportion the 18,000, we shall also use the value of the machine. We depreciate the machine. So we shall use the value of the machine. The ratio, you already know it. There is 12, is to 5, is to 4, is to 2, is to 1. So you will apportion that. The next one is supervisor salary. The next one is the supervisor's salary. So the next one is the supervisor's salary. So supervisor's salary, they gave us 24,000. And they gave us 24,000. So from the 24,000, we check down there. So salary can be apportioned in terms of what? So salary can be a portion in terms of the leverage. So we can use the leverage to apportion the supervisor salary. We can use the leverage to apportion that salary. So let us use the leverage. Leverage. So what ratios do we get from the leverage? There is three eighty. 35, sorry, 350, 340, 300, and also 300. So the least common multiple will be 100. So we don't want a decimal point. I think it should be 10. So that we have that 8 is to 35, that 8 is to 35 is 2. 34, 34, 34. So we don't use those with the decimal points. So you reduce them. So you will add 38, 35, 34, 30, and 30. So if you approach that. The next one should be eating and lighting. The next one should be eating and lighting. So eating and lighting. They gave you 6,400. They gave us 6,400. They gave you 6,400. So heating and lighting, we shall still use the area. And lighting, we shall still use the area. <clears throat> so what ratios do we have there? We already have them. It was 15, it's 9, it's 3, it's 3. So I want you now to apportion. So there's another one allocated to Paris. There is another one. Allocated overheads. There is another one, which is so when you read down there, are you able to see allocated overheads specific to each department? Kuna 28, 17, 12, 800, and 600. So can you add them together and see it will give you an output? There is allocated overhead. Someone to give me the total for the allocated overheads. You can see allocated overhead specific to each department. 
Add 2,800, 1,700, 1,200, 800, 600. So it is 71. Yeah, so that one, the base and the ratio, you just say allocated. The base and the ratio, you just say allocated under that column. So you just record to each separately. So A is 28, and like that. B, it is 1700. 1700. There is also 1200. There is also 800 and 600. So those were allocated. So first, redistribute the ones that will not distribute. Then you will get the total for A. So what I wanted to do, we had not redistributed for three of them. So just redistribute using the model I've used to get these ones. Then after that, get the total for A, total for B, total for C, also X and Y. You can do that. Yeah, so online, redistribute this one, the, this, this, and that. And then after that, get the total for A, total for B, total for C, like that. So that you finish our equation. Those who are online, I hope, are you able to do that? So you get those figures, then you get the total. Yeah. Thank you. 
So that should be there, but we should also compute the overhead absorption rate. So the redistribution of those overheads. So just the way you have, you have calculated the totals. So there is a B, C, X, and oh, I just need the totals. 30, 761, 30, 7, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then ninety two eleven twenty four ninety two eleven twenty four. Yes. Then there was twenty seventy three 
in the first. So this is now the apportionment. So we need to do that allocation. We only redistribute the service to the production. So we redistribute the service to the production. So we use the percentages that were given. You see the service department X cost apportioned 50%, 25%, and 25%. So we start with a share of X. So under the moment, oh right there, the share of X. So we are distributing the 92, 11, 44. That's a coordination numbers. So get 50%, you see the it is 50%. Get 50% of this figure, we give it to N. We get 50% of that figure, we give it to N. 46, 05, 46, 05, 7, 7. Also 25%. Twenty-three zero two points. Twenty-three zero two points. Nine. Then the next one should be yours. Twenty-three zero two points. So that is now we have shared y. Sorry, x. We now also got the share of y. So the share for y. 73, 73. So, you're we supposed to give what percent to A? Twenty one, ninety three point five. Twenty one, ninety three point five. Thirty six, fifty five, twenty seven, thirty six, fifty five point seven. Yeah, so now you get the charges because now this one's the service. The one for the service. So we get to have this total of this also that total of that also that total of that. So that should be the first part. <laughs> so now we get the overhead absorption rates. We get the overhead absorption rates. So the most appropriate base in that question, we have labor hours. We have the labor hours. So overhead absorption rates. Overhead absorption rates will be total overheads. Total overheads we divide by the labor hours, the best labor hours. 
So you call it for each department. You start with the one for department. You start with the one for department. Start the one for department. So how much have you written as the total of the next one? After adding the six, eight, twenty nine, and twenty. Eight, twenty nine, and twenty. So there are three zeros. Now you can find three zeros. And now so I want you to check in the question. Are you able to see the lever house? In brackets, three zeros. No, no. Under the departments. Yes. Yeah, so labor hours three zeros. So for A, it is 3.2 minutes because of the three zeros. So this one you divide by 3.2 minutes so that you get the rate per hour. So department. B, department B. Twenty two, five, twenty six, two hundred. Twenty two, five, twenty six, two hundred. So this one will be right by. Then finally, <laughs> department eighteen one forty four eight hundred. So for the equation you divide by one minute. So that is now by Roman. So Roman letter two, they wanted you to get the total production cost for each job. Total production cost for this job. So total cost will be equal to total cost. Total cost is supposed to be equal to. So total cost will be equal to material cost. When you add together total cost, it's material cost, labor cost, and also the combined costs. So there is job. One. So you start off with the material costs, but I see that they're very rich. So if this one was given, this is between four hundred. The other one is what? Then that costs. costs. So for the lumber cost, we start with department A. So department A, they have 20 hours. When you check the other side, they give you the number eight five. So one by three, eight, 
this one is sixteen months. Then B, you have twelve months. But this one is not much very much. This very fifteen. So this one may be ten. This one may be ten. Then C, which is ten, multiplied by not by three words. So this other is fourteen. So apart from the labor, you also factor in overheads. Apart from the labor, there is also the overhead costs. Apart from the labor, you should also be able to put in the overhead costs. Sorry. Factor in the overhead cost. So I hope online you are able to see. Munana Apochini. Yeah. So under the overheads, we start again with A. Under the overheads, we start again with A. So that A. There are still 20 hours in the underground there. Yeah. Then you calculated the overhead absorption rate. You computed the overhead absorption rate for A. You go to which field? So by 11.5, you get the figure. So this one also get the 16 hours, not by 11.5. So we go to B. We also check the 12, but this one, we go to which here? 12.5. We also this one will be 10. Then the last one is C. So C will do the same. 10, but you got which player? 18.1. 18.1. So this one, you check the question, not by 18. So now you will add them together to give you the total cost. You will add them together in order to give the cost. So we can stop there now for today. The 11.5 is the overhead absorption rate. You remember how we calculated the overhead absorption rate? So, which figure did you get for air? Which figure did you get for A? So these ones are the overhead absorption rates that you have just calculated up there. So did you get 11.5 for A?
Are you about to see where we got the 11.5? When you added your total equality, the total for air, how much was the total overheads for air? After your apportioning, Will you put an appeal to total overheads? Mm. You have 36 H21. Yeah, no, I'm doing 36 H29 100. Yeah. Yeah. So when you divide by the number of the units. The labor hours. So when you divided by the labor hours, you got which figure? The labor hours is not yeah, When you divide by 3.2 million, you got which figure? That figure that you have given me divide by 3.2 million. Check the labor hours that they are. Yeah, so that's the figure. So is this now clear? Yeah, so the same 12.5, the one for B, 18.1 for C. So get now the total for that level. So we can stop there for today. When we meet, now we shall do another question.